Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Now today is a very, very good day for my on the spot episodes because I'm lucky enough to be joined by Capital Breakfast radio host, Sean Welby. Hi Sean, how are you? Hello, yeah, really good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm so excited to speak to you. Thank you so much for joining me today. What was your very first step into your industry? little bits and bobs of online presenting it was just as presenting on websites was taking off which sounds so old it makes me sound like 100 <laughs> I used to interview a doctor who was on this morning he's called Dr Chris I yeah. think he still does it one of my jobs was after the show I'd come down to London and interview him about whatever he'd been talking on this morning about but once you've done your first few little jobs what was your big break when you realized the classic thing where your foot's in the door when did you realize your career was starting to take off I realised that I needed an agent. I'd been trying for like four years to sort of get noticed and I was getting jobs and one of the jobs was in telly, but it was on the extreme sports channel, you know, like channel 3029 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't mainstream, but I was doing stuff. I saw a competition on Facebook to get an agent for a year. Right. And while I was doing that competition, the guy running it said, um, oh, hey, I know that we're still in the middle of this competition, but I've just had a a call up for an advert and they need, let's say 30 girls, 30 guys, like, do you want to come down? It's like 170 quid um, and you might be in this advert. So I was like, great. So I went down to London to do this ad. Yeah. And it was that advert that got me spotted by Channel 5 bosses. And then I became the weather girl off the back of it. Wow. That's amazing. Because when you graduate uni, I've I graduated last year and they, all, they always just tell you, if you want to go into something to do with drama or TV, they always say things like go for grad schemes, go for internships. They never really tell you the other routes. And I haven't even looked into managing or anything like that. And up until now and up until recently, I've only really considered, oh, applying for grad schemes. And when I don't get it, I'm like, oh, I'll have to wait for the next one. But there are so many more, especially now with social media, there are so many more routes into presenting than you might think. So it's really interesting that you got in that way. Genuinely, the biggest challenge is the foot in the door. So yeah. even if you're making tea and coffee, I genuinely believe you're in, you get to know everyone, then you drop in conversation. Oh, I actually want to do presenting. And then people give you a shot. Since you've been on Capital or even on radio, I know you're on, were you on Heart before? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, have you had a favourite on-air moment so far? I got to electrocute Chris Pratt and he's a big guy. And, and when he when I got out this, it's like an electric shocker pen. So I said to him, I was like, if you get a question wrong, I get to electrocute you. And he was looking at his team like, uh, are they sure? Is this okay? And I was like, <laughs> look, I'll do it. I electrocuted myself and was like, fuck. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then he was like, oh God, okay. And then he said, oh, you better do me then. And then I did it to him and it proper hurt him. And really? then we did the whole game and got, I got away with it. I don't know how. At least he said, yeah, and he carried on doing it. That's so good. And I see from obviously listening to the radio in the mornings on the way to work and from the Instagram pages that you have and Capital has, that you guys have loads of celebrity guests in. And like you say, you could do loads of fun, weird things. So which celebrity guest have you had the best time with in the studio so far, would you say? It's a bit of a cliche because I do always mention his name, but it's Ed Sheeran. Just purely because I don't understand how this guy has managed to stay so grounded and humble. Yeah. He still comes in like he's a new artist. And he lets us do anything. If we're like, Ed, can you climb into that box and, and wait for like half an hour for someone to turn up? He's like, sure. He's so successful and he's let none of it go to his head. And in, and he sort of comes on and he still enjoys it and he's he's happy to get involved. Yeah. And you, you then feed off that joy and you think, oh, I'm so glad he's enjoying it. Even with your co-hosts, you have the most amazing time as well. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was listening in and you guys said that you had ordered Greg's in, but you weren't going to touch it until after a couple of songs or something. So what, yeah. is that a, a common thing you guys get Greg's in? What's the favourite go-to studio snack? Greg's has definitely become the treat. You know, like if, we've, if we're coming to the end of a long stint where we haven't had a holiday, we're all, you, you start getting really tired and quite yeah. run down. And then it, you get to a Friday and sometimes you just need that perk. Out of all the things, I mean, sometimes it's been a McDonald's or whatever, but Greg seems to be the one that, just because it arrives with bags full of stuff yeah. and it's great breakfast food. Something that I just 
blew my mind was when you had Becky Hill come onto the show and there's a video of her pranking you and she just starts like arguing with you and she's really moody. She's acting like you've done something to like piss her off. How did you keep your cool in that moment? How did you stay so professional on air and also keep her in your good books? Like, how did that all work? I thought we were both playing along, right? Yeah. At the beginning. I thought, I thought I'm giving her a little bit like, and she's giving it back. And I really, because at the end of the day, I thought I was pranking her because I had to keep going, Becky Hill! Becky Hill! Yeah. Like, in her face. <laughs> yeah. So I knew it was going to slightly irritate her and I felt a bit awkward because I'd never met her before. I have no idea she's obviously pranking me. So there was just a moment where it turned and I thought, oh God, this has gone bad. Like she yeah. is actually annoyed. Stop saying it, please! God's sake! Can you just stop? Yeah. It was horrible. It was like the stuff of nightmares, like a stress dream. I know, I know. It stressed me out watching it because I was thinking, like, I do not know what I would have done in that situation. What is your current favourite Capital tune? That's a great question. Um, again, Ed Sheeran and that Fireboy DML. Which TV show from your childhood would you love to present now? Oh my God. Um, it would be like SMTV Live, I want to be Cat Dealey. You are a lover of gilets, as I saw on your Instagram. So do you have a favourite gilet? I, I can no longer wear the green one because I, I've been torn to shreds for that. Yeah. I have like a nice puffer one from uh, Nelly, Never Fully Dressed and it oh, says nice. love all over it. It's um, quite cool. What is the weirdest fake news that you've read about yourself, if any? I remember once finding a Pinterest account that was called <laughs> Shamobi's Bum, right? And the pictures weren't my bum. <laughs> and I was more offended because in one of the pictures she was wearing yellow trousers. And I was like, I would never wear those trousers. That's the worst part of it, isn't it? Thank you so much for coming on my episode today. It's been so much fun. And um, I hope everyone enjoyed watching it. And please stay tuned for more episodes to come in the future. Thank you so much, everyone.